Hey everyone! Welcome back to another Hardcore But Couture episode. In the last episode, we built up this awesome museum and relic area over here in the spawn area. And on this episode, we have plenty of work to do over in the rosewood. And that's because I want to make an amazing tree farm today that's going to make gathering wood a little bit easier. So let's get over there and start working. Now you may notice that some things around the rosewood look a little bit different and that's because between episodes I've done a few live streams over on YouTube to update our area and we also built an enderman farm out in the end. And look at how satisfying all that XP is. So I think the main thing I need to be worried about here is where we're gonna put the tree farm. And to be honest, we have a ton of space over in this region that is not being used, but that's because it does need some work. And this is definitely going to be our spot today. Over here, I did have the intention of doing some work and bringing down a waterfall underneath the bridge leading into our frog sanctuary. So I think I'm just going to remove these trees and do a little bit of terraforming and get that like river starting to flow through the mountain. And unfortunately, all of this is going to have to go because streams do not flow upwards. So we're going to have to make this look a little bit more natural by getting rid of everything one block at a time. And over here, I'm just going to fill this in because we can just lead our stream down this way. And then I guess I should shape this a little bit to make sure that the water is going to flow. But we're going to do most of this when the water is actually flowing. So that way we know exactly where to break. And up in here is where I'm gonna start the water flowing from. It's far back enough that you can't really see it from like the entryway or the bridge. Um, and I just need to make a permanent water source here and then we can just pick up water. There we go and start filling this whole thing in. I don't know if this is just me, but trying to make water flow naturally is one of the most difficult things I think there is in Minecraft besides like roofs. This is um, a little bit stressful because I don't really know exactly what I'm doing and water mechanics are sometimes really weird and it doesn't do what I expect it to do. I don't know. Regardless of whether or not it looks right, I'm in my trust the process era. So that's what I'm going to do now. Trust the process. Okay, I just want to check what it looks like from up here on the bridge. And well, we're trusting the process, but the process has not yet finished, truthfully. However, I do not have time to finish terraforming this right now because we have an entire farm to build. And before we can build, we need to turn our attention to over here. I need to do a little bit of terrain work and just kind of like even out all these like awkward and weird Minecrafty looking spots. We also need to fill up these like weird patchy holes. Um, and I'm definitely gonna double or triple layer them with dirt and grass. I usually always like to put a pathway through as well, just so I can make sure I have enough space. Now, sometimes I build the place and then put the pathway, but for an area like this, where eventually it's gonna have more than just one build, definitely wanna connect up that path early. I think what I'm gonna do is actually connect this to our pathway that goes over here by the iron farm. I just feel like that makes the most sense in terms of like movement through this area. Wait, it's kind of getting a little dark. We should go sleep really quick. I don't want to die. Oh yes, 6.30 in the morning and making pathways. Well, 6.30 in the morning in Minecraft. It's actually around noon in real life, so I should be having lunch soon, but lunch can wait. Okay, I definitely want to branch my pathway off a little bit and I want to make it go over here as I do believe this is a great spot for a build someday. Like it's just perfect. And then over here, I've got to get back to, I guess, filling up all of this area so I have a nice flat area to work with so we can decide where the tree farm is going to go. So I'll bring you back once this is done. Okay, just a little progress update as we're almost done completely flattening out and filling in this area over here. I've left this part open because I do believe we're going to be putting the tree farm here. I just want to cover it up to see how much space we actually have to work with. And then it's not that much dirt to remove and we'll have the beacon down so it'll be fine and let's just take a quick look from the skies oh yeah that's perfect that is definitely enough space 
You know, I have just realized that this actually stops right here and I should probably connect this down here. I think that was my intention originally. Connect this down to the path by the iron farm. And you know what? These poor chickens. <sighs> I should put them in the chicken coop thingy. Okay, everybody follow over here. Yep, this is a waterfall of chickens. There are so many over there. I'm so sorry. Um, the gate is already closed and you know, I'm so sorry. You you actually ha you have to go. I'm so sorry. Okay, back to the task at hand. No more distractions, no more pathways, no more chickens. It is time to set up the beacon. And let's slap that bad boy down on there and get some haste to going. Okay, I'm going to turn on my chunk borders. And with this, I'm going to find a chunk like this one, and I'm going to mark out a couple extra blocks on each side. The farm is definitely not going to be a 16 by 16, but I like to have a little bit of extra space just in case, you know, like there's nothing worse than thinking that you're done with like the big grindy part of a project and then realizing you have to grind some more, like doing even more terrain work. Every single time that I start recording, it starts raining, which is just so weird, but it's time i marked out our path with pathway and we are going to dig out a 21 by 21 so let's get to it and then that's exactly what i did i dug a 55 block deep hole in the ground and i hope that this was going to be enough space for our tree farm and truthfully i was just zoning out this whole time because i had a movie on so i got to watch a movie and play minecraft it was great Okay, here we are at the top, and this is quite a big hole. As you can see, this took me quite a while. I think it's almost like 60 blocks deep, and it's a 21 by 21, so this took a while. Luckily though, we got a ton of new stone and materials, and even some obsidian, and some lava, and some ores. I still have to clear out this little bit and the bamboo, but oh, I'm getting so excited for what this whole area is going to look like soon. What was that? It's not raining. Huh? I mean, I know it's like October, but is my game haunted? Um, but honestly, I'm not gonna afford any more energy to that because I have no idea why that happened. And I don't know, I looked all around for skelly horses. I thought it might be like a skeleton horse summon, but there was no horses. And I don't know, I just, I, I have to chop all this spruce. I'm so sorry. And I'm actually going to need about a shulker box worth of spruce, I think, for the tree farm. I kind of want to do like a really natural design. And each wall is going to take like between like nine and ten stacks of spruce and dark oak. So, ah, oh, yeah, we've got a lot of collecting to do. I took a little break to do my weekly Wednesday live stream and we worked on this rose garden and yeah, I love this so much. We also added a little retaining wall here. That way the sunflower field is a little bit more contained and it also helps break up, you know, just this area here so we can more easily put some different builds. And over there we terraformed a bit because this is where a village is going to be going. Once I transform this village that's over here, It'll, you know, it'll start out here. We still have some more terraforming to do, but we'll get there. Next up though, before we do anything with this village, which will be coming in a future episode, I promise, we actually need to go out to a dark oak forest as we need to collect about a shulker box of dark oak wood as well. And since we're heading out here towards the mob farm, here we go. I want to see if there's any bones left here that we can use as bone meal in the farm. Okay, it does look like I did leave a few bones here, so we'll grab all of those up. Yep, that works. And oh my gosh, the farm is still on. I should probably shut that off. And I want to take a quick peek at my map for the coordinates to the Dark Oak Forest that I've been to before. And honestly, I don't really care what anyone thinks about this. I'm pretty bad at coordinates, so this really helps me find my way home. And just so I don't forget, I'm going to type negative 4680 in the chat. And I'm going to look for the other coordinate again as well. Where was the forest there? So like negative 2500, negative 2541. So we'll just put down negative 2540. And the big reason that I'm doing this is so that I can divide these coordinates by eight and then go to that place on the nether roof and create a portal there. And yeah, our portal put us in some trees, but we are here in the dark oak forest. So 
I guess now it's time to collect an entire shulker box of this dark oak wood. And I think we're gonna be here for a while, so I just wanted to say that gathering materials is definitely my second favorite part of doing a big project. My favorite part definitely has to be actually like building the project. I feel like building is so much fun. But planning, terraforming, absolutely not. My least favorite part's right there. Planning is helpful, and don't get me wrong, I love to plan. I am a planning girly, but not a part that I usually look forward to. You know what? I'm probably going to take a bunch of these as well. I think that we're going to end up using some red mushroom blocks in this sniffer ranch. You know, I didn't even include like decorating, although I, I feel like I'm trying to get better at decorating. So maybe that's why I didn't include it. But decorating is also a good part of building. I didn't gather an entire shulker box of dark oak. It's almost a full shulker box, but this is actually less devastation than I thought there was going to be. We've got a couple of extra stacks of like saplings and some brown mushroom as well. So, I mean, I feel like this might be enough. Hopefully it's enough. I mean, we can always come back. For now, it's time to head home and actually start decorating so we can build the farm. Actually, I lied as I want to go into the nether and grab some nether quartz because I want to use smooth quartz as one of the walls in the farm. And honestly, I do have quite a few masons that I could use for trading quartz, but there's just something so boring about standing there and trading for quartz when I could be going on like an adventure, you know? Besides, I don't really have a great way to get emeralds in this world. I'm not really generating any besides trading with my cartographers and then back with my librarians in that like positive infinite loop. Ew, magma cubes, gross, gross, get away from me. This is for one shot season three, froggy. Anyways, with the upcoming changes to villagers that Mojang is messing around with, I was thinking that I probably need to get a better source of emerald generation going in this world, but that's not going to be a project for today, but definitely in the future. Anyways, I'm going to put about 30 minutes on the clock and I'm going to run around and see how much quartz I can gather. Okay, 30 minutes later, we have about eight stacks of nether quartz. So I'm gonna fortune it up and we're gonna see how much we actually get from this. I know we have an elytra so we can see our world from the sky at any time, but I still love to have like a giant flex pile of ores that I'm gonna mine up and like be able to look down on my world. It still looks so cool to me. Oh, also I think that's my missing shulker that I was looking for earlier. Completely forgot it was there. Okay, we're at the top of the flex pile. This is all eight stacks of nether quartz, and I guess there's no time like the present. We're gonna start fortuning it all up. Let's see how much we get. Wow, there's a lot of quartz on the ground. And also, small disclaimer, I have already picked it up once already because I thought that it was gonna despawn. I got scared. But let's see, let's pick all this up. How much did we get? Whoa, okay, so eight stacks turned into, how many stacks of quartz blocks are we gonna get? Um, almost four and a half. Unfortunately, that is nowhere near enough, so we are definitely gonna have to go trade with villagers again. Hello, friends, I am back. Now, this is what I traded earlier, so... <sighs> We only have almost 10 stacks and I think that we need like at least double that. All right, let's get all of this glass traded over and they haven't refreshed because I haven't been here. Oh no. Well, I think this is going to take quite a while and oh my God, how did I get in here? Like what? Anyways, I'll bring you back when it's all done. Okay, well, I just spent all of my emerald fortune, which was about, you know, 45 blocks or so of emeralds on quartz blocks. Yay! But I don't want quartz blocks, I want smooth quartz blocks, and to do that, I'm gonna need to smelt them, so I guess we're making another flex pile. This time, it's gonna be coal. And this time, I'm gonna be smarter and do it over by the beacon. And let's see how much we're gonna get from four stacks of coal blocks with fortune three. Honestly, I wanna move towards a more sustainable fuel source, but for now, I guess coal is gonna have to do it. I definitely think we need like a renewable lava farm though. That would probably be ideal for the future. And from four stacks of coal, after we gather all of this up, we got, what is this, nine? No, 10 stacks, 10 stacks and even a little bit more of coal, nice. 
Here in the super smelter, we're going to add our coal into the back mine carts, and then we're going to add our blocks of quartz into the super smelter to be smelted down into smooth quartz. And now we just got to wait for all of the smooth quartz to be done. Okay, I have all my quartz, I have all of the wall blocks, I think, and I have blocks for the floor as well. So I've got to put all that stuff in now before I build the farm because I want to still have the benefits of the beacon. And unfortunately, it is 1000% in the way but it won't be for much longer. I'm doing sort of a classic that I always do in this world, which is mossy and cobble and stone brick and moss and all of that stuff together. I feel like it's just such a good combination. And truthfully, I think it's gonna look great with the walls, which are gonna be a combination of wood paneling almost, and it's gonna be stripped spruce and stripped dark oak. And this last little bit here, it looks really, really good, I think. Once the floor was in, I started stacking up frog lights in all the corners and then slowly had to mine out another layer of stone for the wood to go in. And then of course, once that layer of stone was removed, I started adding in the pattern on the walls with some stripped dark oak and stripped spruce. And in the middle, we added some frog lights as well. And I did this on three of the walls that were in the hole and the fourth wall was gonna be a little bit different. And here's an up close view of how it's looking. Now, don't look over there. I haven't done that wall yet, but I will. This wall is going to have like a little bit of pixel art on it. And it's going to be inspired by my friends, Brooke and Sev and Drift. They gave me the idea for this. So thank you guys so much. So my basic plan is just to use smooth quartz as like the outside of the wall. And then in the middle to make this little like pixel art tree. And I don't know, I'm a little bit nervous because it's kind of hard to decorate a space that's this tall. I've never had to do it before. I don't want the proportions for the tree to be off, but I wouldn't be able to figure out the proportions without digging out another layer for all of the smooth quartz to go into. So that's what I did. And then I started adding smooth quartz into the crevices and hopefully making a nice little tree shape. And at the end, it looked like this, but I promise we're going to make this better. Just trust the process. At least it's all mined out. OK, I, I promise. Before I finish the pixel art, however, I just want to make sure that all of this is going to fit and nothing is going to explode once I put the tree farm in. So let me grab all the stuff I need and we're going to build the tree farm. I need a dropper and a couple of pistons, a couple of other odds and ends like some trap doors and I'm going to need some scaffolding. And I think all of this is exactly everything we're going to need besides some building blocks. And once I had those, I jumped directly into building the farm collection area first. And as always, I will link this farm in the description. And if you're wondering, yes, I am going to be covering the frog lights, but I actually need to run the farm before I can cover the frog lights because I don't have enough spruce to do it right now. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to need like 20 stacks of trapdoors. So it's going to be an expensive craft. And to get those trapdoors, I'm going to have to actually turn the farm on, which is going to require me to fill all this up with bone meal. That's the rest of it. Then we have to take a block and fill up every other available space in our inventory. So this is a little bit strange, but that's okay. We put our saplings in our offhand, and now we're going to flick this lever and this turns on the farm. Okay. Now we're going to get this bone meal like this. Dropper is going to fill up our hands until we have a stack and then it'll stop. Now put on night vision here just so we can see what's going on a little bit better. But yeah, we just sit here when we place our saplings, they automatically get refed to us from the water stream below us. And the dropper will keep spitting out bone meal for us as well. So I'm going to do this for like two minutes and we're going to see how much wood we get after two minutes. Okay, two minutes is up. Let's turn this off. Turn the farm off and how much wood did we get? Not bad. Uh, I thought that the iron bars was so supposed to be there, but I guess not. Whoa. Okay. So in one chest we got 41 and then the other chest we got almost three stacks. So three and a half stacks in two minutes is ridiculous. That's amazing. I guess now the next step is going to be covering all of these frog lights with trap doors. These frog lights are so bright with the shaders. It's really, really hard to actually even place these, but they are so necessary. This is such a large space to light up. All right, we're just gonna, I think I'm in the swim animation. Yep, I am. Okay. Well, I'm gonna close all of these, but I should put my elytra on just in case I fall. A little bit scared. 
and just a couple more, all done. Now to only do that a bunch more times. And now all the trapdoors are in and it's looking much, much better on the eyes here. Now over here, I've left a gap in the wall and that's gonna be where the bubble elevator goes so we can get up and down pretty easily. And there's gonna be a ceiling on here as well. Now I am gonna put a plank ceiling here, just one above where all the trapdoors and stuff stop. But I won't go through putting in the entire bubble elevator and stuff. You guys already know how that works. So once I get all of this in, I'll be back and then we'll build up our little farmhouse on top. The holes patched up, I put some dirt on top of the ceiling and the water elevator is all in. I just need to go and check my storage room and make sure I have everything for this build. We're probably going to have to go get some calcite and of course it's raining again. I think we have enough polished diorite and yeah, we have enough diorite as well, but only 14 calcite. So I do know where some calcite is. Let's go mine some up. Also, you may have noticed I did change out my elytra texture because I have the cherry blossom cloak on from Mojang for voting in the mob vote. Here you can see it sort of in the screen. It's so pretty. And right down here is our calcite vein. It doesn't look very big, so I'm just going to grab all of it while I'm here. And hopefully it'll have enough to build our farmhouse, although it definitely looks like it should. There we go. All of it should definitely be enough. This is absolutely one of my favorite views that I've ever had of Minecraft before. I love flying into the rosewood and seeing all these little additions we've added. Ah, oh, it's lovely here. Okay, I've got all the things that I'm gonna need to build this. I wanna get to it. I know that this episode is already becoming quite long, so let's get building. I started the build off by building a little stone foundation area. I added a spruce gate railing and then I moved on to adding some pillars with uh, some stripped dark oak. I used some oak leaves on top of the chiseled stone bricks to give like these fake flower boxes and of course added a lot of these leaves outside as well for some bush and then I moved on to working on the roof and of course we filled that in with our classic spruce trim and mangrove planks, well stairs. And I didn't mention the walls, but they're all of the calcite and diorite combination. Then I moved on to doing a little bit of farming as I was going to need a lot of wheat seeds to plant another wheat field over by the new farmhouse. Then I worked on a little bit of an arched entryway with some trap doors and a mangrove door as well. As always, we put in some red stained glass windows. Then outside over the entrance, I made this like little overhang thing. And of course, I gotta leave my little block mistakes here, misplacing the trap door because I make a lot of mistakes while I build and that's sometimes why it takes me so long to build. Inside the house, I split the rooms and then I added a chest area for any overflow from downstairs. And then of course, I did the outside detailing by adding a ton of leaves. I touched up the other window treatments as well. After that, I started to plot out the pathway that I'd be using on foot to go to the farm. Now this was going to go past the bamboo area and where the coarse fruit farm used to be. And then of course we had to bring it over to where the sniffer area was going to be as well. And I wanted to keep the sniffers in a pen over here. So I made this like weird little shape that matched the farm down below with some strip dark oak and strip spruce. And then in between I was using the spruce fences to connect everything together. And this area was still far from being perfect or done, but at least it was finally taking shape. Now we collected all those wheat seeds earlier for a reason, and that's because out here around the farmhouse, I want to have like another big wheat field. I know that the sniffers are not going to eat the wheat seeds and the wheat, but the people around who are building up the rosewood and living here will. I love the idea of having all of these like beautiful fields kind of right nearby the village so that they can come and visit them. And of course they can go through the rosewood to get there. And I think that's why it's so important to me because I think about if I was a person living in this world that I wouldn't have an elytra maybe, I would be scared to go fight the dragon. You know, that's totally valid, you know? So having pathways and connecting things together is really, really important to me. Also, this is gonna be a complete change of topic from what we were just talking about, but we are actually going to go into the nether because it's Halloween. Last year, I was not geared enough to get a weather skeleton with a pumpkin on its head, but this year I am and I want one so badly. So let's head over here to the nether portal by the village. 
and we're gonna fly over here towards the nether fortress that i know is in the soul sand valley which is just through here oh my gosh a skeleton with a pumpkin not the one that i want but you know what it's a good sign it's a good sign and you know what contrary to the last time i was here on a holiday the nether is sort of halloween I've swapped to my chest plate and now I'm going to explore this fortress and hopefully lure a wither skeleton over to that opening over there. That's not a wither skeleton. That's an enderman. Oh man. Why am I like this? Moving on. Hello? Any wither skellies home? Nope. Nothing over here. I, but that's a baby zombie piglin with a pumpkin and he's like clipping through with the custom model uh, you know what tomorrow starts a one shot smp and not going anywhere near those guys oh, i still haven't found any wonder oh wait that was one that was for sure one i heard him hello yep there he is no pumpkin though so unfortunately you have to die Maybe you can give me a skull. All right. No pumpkin on this one either. I hear another one. <gasps> yes, yes. Okay, come on, follow me. Follow me this way, Mr. Wither Skeleton. All the way home. Not all the way home. I'm not ready for you yet. I don't have anywhere for you to live yet. Okay, so this is what I think I'm gonna do. I'm going to leave him here in the nether in this fortress until I can get him a place to live in the overworld. I just don't know quite what I want to build for him yet. So for now, unfortunately, Stinky, you have to stay here. And to protect you, I'm going to put this cobble box around you. And even though you're trying to hurt me, I still want you to live. I feel like you'll be a good addition to the rosewood. And now once we box you in, I'm going to go home and finish up all the rest of my work. First try. First try. First try. First try, let's go. Just a few little things left to take care of and I've added some more greenery to the house with some glow berries. I just also added a little patch here of all the different flowers that we get from the sniffers that I've been collecting the whole time that I've been building. But we still need to name our sniffers. So we're gonna go over to our house and grab some name tags and I've picked out some names from the comment section that I think you guys are gonna love. Um, I don't know where my bed is though, so we're gonna have to make a new bed and I'm feeling honestly a red bed. I don't know how I didn't already have a red bed in this world. Oh my gosh, I have such a mess here to go through. Okay, we're not gonna talk about it. I know I need a storage area. Soon, TM. Let's just grab our four name tags. And now I get to reveal the names that I've chosen, which are Sir Snuffles. This one feels like a Sir Snuffles right here. There's Cherry shaggy and watermelon thank you guys so much for all the awesome name suggestions i love them there is one more thing we need to do today and that's going to be to fill in the tree because i completely forgot about that until just now and at the bottom here i'm going to start with some stripped dark oak i'm going to bring that up about a third of the way through the height of the trunk and after this, we'll switch to some spruce planks to have a little bit of a better transition between the spruce and the stripped dark oak. And then here at the top of the trunk, we're going to do some stripped spruce wood. And then on each side, I want to take out some blocks and I want to add in like some branches. All right, let's see what that looks like from over here. Oh yeah, that's cute. I like that. And then for the leaves, I want to do kind of a combination of moss, leaves, and frog lights. And the leaves and frog lights are just to add a little bit of light in here because honestly, it'll get really, really dark if we don't do this. I am a little bit alarmed though, as I thought I was going to have enough moss for this, but I do not. So I'm going to have to go gather moss to finish this. Before I go though, I want to add a couple of leaves on the edges here just to give a little bit more of an overgrown vibe. There is a lush cave nearby in a jungle biome that I found in like my very first episode. I do believe it's right over here. There's like a little opening. Yep. There we go. Switch to the chest plate and let's go. And I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me gather stacks and stacks of moss and kill zombies, but I am going to be here for a while grabbing some moss. 
You know, every single episode I say that I need a moss farm and every single episode I haven't done one. So coming up very, very soon, we are going to be making a moss farm, I swear. I also think a melon and pumpkin farm is going to be in my future as well because I think I need a better source of emeralds. Especially with the trading village coming up. Ooh, another axolotl. Nice. All right, I'm ready to get out of here. I don't think I need any more moss. So let's go home. All right, I'm home. I'm going to go finish the tree and then we'll finish up this episode. Adding a little bit more of those like leaves on the side for some extra overgrown bits. And of course, adding in some more frog lights for some more lighting. And then just pretty much filling in the rest with moss. I made this a little bit too big, so I'm going to fill this in with smooth quartz and bring down the top of the wall. And now I want to go look at it through the water elevator. Oh, it looks so good. I love it. We also get to see it on the way down. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy with that. Also, we are currently on day 694. So I just want to say this episode took me almost 100 in-game days to make. And I just want to say once again, thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun building up all the projects in this episode with you all. I can't wait until next time and see what other projects we're going to be working on. This tree farm came out amazing if we just ignore, of course, the little chest monster right there. We just don't even see that. We pretend not to see it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.